Hi, and welcome to this exciting faster tutorial about rendering stereoscopic 360 animation footage out from Blender EV. And uh, I'm using the latest stable version of Blender, so 2.83.5. And uh, we are going to do this with the help of an awesome script uh, that is hosted on GitHub. But let's first model the scene that we are going to be using. So we are quickly going to build like domino blocks and just make them fall with physics, just so we have something in our scene. So let's model this scene really quickly. We are simply creating these beveled little blocks, and then we are going to use the array modifier to distribute them in a circular fashion. So let's add an empty object in the center, and then we are going to select the mesh object and set the array to be used to use the object offset here. And now if we rotate the empty, then the arrayed uh, objects will react to that. And we want to have more of them, so let's increase the amount and we can see how they are spinning around. And now if we grab the empty with G and just move it around until we find a good um, arrangement for some domino blocks here. That looks pretty good. Now we can just go ahead and apply the array. And these are going to be all part of the same object. So I'm going to go to edit mode and quickly hit P and choose separate by loose parts to make each one of these their own object. Let's rotate one of these a little bit so that it's ready to kind of knock the rest of them over in a domino-like effect. And we are also going to Let's select them all, and because we're using physics, it's a good idea to set the origin to the geometry. So now the origin of each object is in the center of its geometry. And we are going to add a quick ground plane uh, for the physics simulation to play out nicely. And now it's time to go to the physics tab and add some rigid body physics. The floor is going to be passive because we don't want it to move around. It should just only collide but not move. And then we are going to add to the falling block a rigid body. And we are also going to add rigid bodies to the other blocks here. But from the dynamics, we are going to enable deactivation so that they are not falling down when the simulation begins. We want them to be knocked over by the one block that is falling down. And uh, we are going to have to copy the settings from the active objects to all of the objects in the selection. So I'm going to hit F3 and just type in copy rigid body settings. And that's going to allow us to quickly transfer those settings to each one of the selected objects from the king of the selection, the active object. Now we are going to bake the simulation and hit play. And there we go. Looks kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of a Blender logo. OK, so now let's uh, do some shading. So we are simply going to go to the shading layout and plug a color ramp to the base color. And then we're going to use an object uh, info node and connect the, uh, the random uh, output into the input of the color ramp. And that way we will get random colors for each object. And we can, of course, change the colors uh, by changing the colors of the color ramp. So just to have some color variation, make it a bit more interesting. And we are also going to give a material to the floor. I guess we can set it to be relatively like shiny. So drop the roughness down, maybe add some metalness to it. But uh, we're not going to build anything uh, amazing here, because that's not the main point of this tutorial. We just want to have something. And uh, the main point is the, the 360 re degree render with stereoscopic imaging. And so now I'm going to just scale this. I want to have the world quite large. So I'm going to scale this up a lot just to make it more impressive looking, I guess. And uh, after it's scaled, I'm going to apply the scale and uh, rebake the simulation. And we're going to do uh, a bit more frames here. Let's make it 1000. Let's make it 1000 so that uh, we have enough time because these uh, large blocks are going to fall down slowly. And uh, that way we have enough frames. Okay, so that's uh, that's our animation. 
And now let's get into the interesting stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna position the camera. So let's go to the camera view with numpad zero. And then we can hit F3 and search for walk. And we're gonna choose walk navigation. And I'm gonna use the Q button on the keyboard to get down a little bit. So it's kind of take the camera down and that's gonna give us this kind of uh, low perspective, which will make the blocks look uh, even bigger. And I think that's pretty good. So that's our camera position. Looks fine to me. And uh, now let's go and grab this uh, EVR from GitHub. We need this VR render Python script here. So let's click on that one. And then uh, we can just click raw and save the file. Save it as, just save it somewhere. And then we can go back to Blender and we can go to edit, preferences, add-ons, install, and choose our Python script, hit install add-on, and this might be a little bit confusing next because nothing seems to show up. Uh, that's because we need to go to the testing tab to find this EVR add-on. So enable it there, and we can see that it's gonna live under View 3D, the UI panel. So let's go ahead and open that panel, and here we have EVR now. So now we just uh, define the mode. Do we want Equire Rectangular or Full Dome? And I think Equire Rectangular is the more common option. And the field of view should be 360, since we are doing a full 360 render. And now we could just basically hit Render Animation. But because we want stereoscopic footage, we should also go ahead and configure that. And that's configured in the regular Blender interface under the stereoscopy area in, inside the render settings here. And I'll just enable it, and I guess that should be enough. We can go with the default settings here. Save the file. And I'm gonna add a quick uh, HDRI for the world. So quick environment texture. I have a collection of HDR images in my Google Drive uh, downloaded from a some free resource HDR resource websites. So I'm just going to grab one of those real quick, just to have some um, nicer lighting going on, some reflections going on. And uh, that's that. Here's how the camera view looks like, by the way. So if you had like anaglyph glasses, you could see the 3D in the viewport, I guess. So now I'm just going to set the resolution to 4096 and the height should be uh, that divided by two. And the final resolution will be 4096 times 4096 because the Y will be doubled because we are doing this stereoscopic top bottom type of arrangement. So now we just hit render animation and we can see that the frames uh, are starting to appear. We have two frames already ready here. Okay, so now we have all of them rendered. If we open one, let's say in paint, then we can see how it looks like. And this is how one frame looks like in, in paint. One image on the top and one on the bottom. And it might be nice to have uh, to show how these can then be made into a video instead of this um, still sequence, so that we can easily upload it to YouTube or save it to, let's say, uh, Oculus Quest. So I'm going to download FFmpeg here for Windows. So just go ahead and grab FFmpeg. I'm going to go ahead and uh, unzip FFmpeg, go to the bin folder. And here uh, we are going to open up the command line here by hitting, uh, typing CMD on the address bar. So that will open up a command window in the that right uh, address. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a uh, almost ready-made a ready-made script from echeng.com which has this very good resource for different um, FFmpeg commands. So we want this one, side load H265, very high quality. I'm going to copy this uh, command and paste it in like Notepad++ to modify it a little bit first. So we need to change the input, obviously. We don't have a file called input.mov. And then here's uh, how the output will be named. That's fine, I guess. Um, but for the input, we actually uh, need to use the image sequence. So in order to use an image sequence for the input, we need to 
type in the beginning string of the of the file names. So that in our case, that's frame. Yeah, I can show you here if we go to the folder. There we go. We can actually see that the files are called frame, frame, and then followed by a six-digit changing incrementing number. I'm actually going to go ahead and copy all those files, select them all, and hit Control X and copy and paste them, or cut and paste them into the ffmpeg bin, just to access them easily without having to type in the file path. Just a lazy move. And uh, now that they're in the same folder as the ffmpeg.exe, now I can just type in frame followed by a percentage symbol and then six for six digits and d for digit and this means that it's gonna just grab all the files that start with the term frame and then followed by six digits and i need to type in also dash frame rate 30 to indicate that this is actually a sequence and i believe i also need to type in dash r 30 to indicate the output file frame rate. And I forgot to type in .png, so it didn't work the first time. So let's just go remember to type in after 60.png. Now I'm going to copy this command. I'm going to hit CMD on the address bar to open up the command window in that location. Paste the command in and hit enter. And now it's going to start um, executing the command and it's going to build a video file from from these uh, PNG images and it's going to take a while so I'll just skip uh, to where it's finished okay there we go now all the frames frames have been handled and um, now we can go ahead and see the result so I don't know why it says encoded uh, 1200 frames because there was only 1000 frames but for some reason it says 1200 but yeah now i can open up this uh, output file in in like vlc player and there we can see that it has built this nice video file for us okay so one more step um, if we want to upload this to youtube we need to inject this with the proper metadata so let's just go ahead and uh, do that next I'm going to go and search for the metadata tool, the free tool. Uh, I think it's provided by Google. And so just if you search for metadata inject injector, you can go to Google's GitHub. And uh, there's the spatial medium metadata injector. And I'm just going to click download for the Windows version. Save it, unzip it and run it. And now we are going to open up our uh, fresh video file that FFmpeg created. And we are going to indicate that it is indeed a spherical 360 degree video. And also that it's stereoscopic, top bottom layout. And then we're going to hit inject metadata. And it's going to want to save it with a new file name. And it adds the underscore injected string at the end of the file name. So it doesn't overwrite the old file. So that's that. Now it should have the correct metadata, and that means that YouTube can YouTube can handle it properly. So let's just uh, try the YouTube upload and see what happens. So I'm going to go to YouTube, hit Upload. I'm going to select my file with the injected string at the end of the file name, and then it's going to just uh, bring it in. It's going to take a while to upload. Uh, let's just name this something like 360 stereoscopic anime from Blender EV. And then we're just gonna go through all the different settings here. There's nothing really important that you need to click. I'm gonna use unlisted for now. I uh, don't wanna publish this just yet. And uh, yeah, it's gonna process it for a while, so it won't work at first. So don't worry if it doesn't work immediately, it, it's gonna have to process it. So you can't really use the 360 degree features yet. So let's leave it to process and we'll come back uh, in a while. And now it, I'm back. If we refresh this, it has processed it enough to give us this 360 um, um, pan tool. 
So now we can use the hand tool to look around. Also, if you would be using uh, YouTube VR in, for example, Oculus headset, then um, this video would show up correctly there. And if you want to just directly uh, load it into Oculus Quest without YouTube, you can use this SideQuest software that allows you to um, sideload videos and applications to your Oculus Quest. So you would just download the Windows version, connect your Oculus Quest with USB, and then uh, you should be able to access the Oculus Quest internal storage. And you can copy the file there, for example, into the Movies folder, and then you would use the Oculus Gallery application to view it. It might need a restart of the Oculus before it sees the file. At least in my case, uh, I was waiting and waiting, and the file didn't show up. Uh, but when I restarted Oculus, then I could see the file. But hey, that's how easy it is to create stereoscopic 360 degree footage right from Blender EV, which is really exciting because now we can uh, render these huge resolutions with relatively fast speeds. So exciting times. Thanks for watching. Thank you Eternal Trail for creating this awesome EVR script. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.